Um, good afternoon, my name is Terry Burt. Um, my current company is 2E2, and I've done a number of different roll-ups over time. Um, not all of this has been necessarily by complete design. Um, I became an accountant early on by accident, in that I gave something. Do you want Terry to put his, sorry, do you want his sorry, microphone? Sorry, microphone. A bit higher. Show the button in the middle. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Higher up there. I'll do Thanks. Beautiful. So I um, gave a friend a lift to an, uh, an interview and became an accountant as a result of that. Uh, I <laughs> went into uh, accountancy, did a lot of computer work, so I went into computers thinking oh, I'll go into that for a while. 28 years later, I didn't get out. Um, so things, whenever I explain to my sons, the career path is not always as clear as you think it's going to be. And I've subsequently now done um, fundraising on NASDAQ. I've done it on London Stock Exchange. Uh, I've done a couple of rounds of private equity, three rounds of private equity, and at each and every turn raised money for the different things. Uh, my overall takeaway uh, on this is that fundraising is by far and away one of the most difficult things of all to do. Um, I have had success at it, and I have had absolute gut-wrenching failure. I tried to do an IPO uh, on London Stock Exchange in the early days of 2E2, and the story was too complex. And nothing can come close to that feeling of failure that goes when you don't get it away, having put all of that effort in and spent all of that money. So um, first of all, good luck to all of you who want to do the fundraising. It is amongst the most difficult things that, that you will ever do. Um, it always comes down to team, concept, and transaction. Uh, you've got to have a good idea. You've got, there's got to be a good business idea. You've got to be able to explain it. You've got to be able to put it across. And very often, the, the venture capitalists who we're giving an, an appropriate flogging to at the moment um, will be looking for a good team that will back that. Um, the other thing that you need to do, I think per the, some of the earlier comments from the panel, I think you need to find somebody who you can work with. Um, whenever you get the comment about, uh, well, we bring passion or expertise in a given sector, I think you can generally speak and expect to be disappointed by that. Not wholesale, but what very often, there is a difference between venture funding and private equity funding. Venture funding, people tend to understand more the technology and what you're doing and will get more behind it. Private equity funding, you'll tend to find that the people will bring money and governance. And governance is worth an awful lot. It holds your feet to the fire in terms of what goes on. And that very often is key in terms of some of the fundraising elements that you get. Um, tricks of the trade we talked about. Um, I think transparency. Uh, when I've done roll-ups and I've built companies and done various things, uh, I've gained an awful lot by being relatively straightforward with people. Uh, I've the chipping that a lot of people used to do in the 90s and bits and pieces on price and stuff, I don't really buy into. I think if you um, let people know what you're trying to do, be entirely straightforward with them, you get a better result from that. Uh, advisors are absolutely key, um, but use advisors in the right place. You should know more than your advisors do about the industry that you're in, and you should actually drive that process. If you ask an advisory firm to do a search for you, the recently employed chemistry graduate will be doing it for you. They don't know that much about it. You need to find people who genuinely know. But then when you are going to prosecute a transaction, absolutely the best advice is key. Not only for the details of the transaction, but in terms of actually your own deal and various things like that. So I think you have to do that, but equally don't overpay for advice, drive it hard. Even now, I look at the cost of advice and I compare that to how long do we work in order to actually make that much money uh, in order to do that. And uh, we've just concluded a deal uh, where we've doubled the size of the company uh, and from 200 million to 400 million and the fees were just over 10 million on that. I'll say that again quickly, just over 10 million on that. So that's a third of the year I've had to work in order to actually pay for that deal. This is an expensive process as well at the same time. So I think uh, fees and advisors are absolutely vital. Um, in whatever you do, I think lots of people will say to you, um, 
what are your key takeaways? What would your key pieces of advice be? Um, lots of people will say about acquisition and various things that integration is absolutely essential. I agree entirely. I think concept is more interesting. I think a lot of people acquire because they think they should, don't really know where their business is, and don't really acquire what they should do in order to do that. And therefore, I think if it starts from the wrong concept, I don't think you're going to get the right result as far as that's concerned. So I personally think the concept on integration transaction um, is absolutely vital. Um, other things, um, go through the exciting world of DD and various other things. I have done 50 transactions. I would say part of that is because I've been relatively pragmatic. Having been sure I wanted to do the thing, what I've then done is constantly ask myself the question, would this stop me doing the deal or not? And some things would. So that if I get a note back saying all of the terms and conditions will need updating, absolutely. It's on a list of things I need to do afterwards. If there's a nasty pension scheme that's got a big liability, OK, I might not do it, or whatever it would be. So pragmatism, I always find, is, is required in order to make these things go. Um, lessons learned, key ones. Uh, I have never seen a business plan where 2 plus 2 does not equal 5. Um, and they're always hockey-sticked and they're always put that way. Almost invariably in my experience, I've seen 2 plus 2 equal about 3 or 3 and a half. <laughs> Every time you put things together, something is lost at some stage and it, that's almost inevitable in the process. Later on you may gain it, the strategy may work, but almost inevitably from the get-go, everybody's business plan looks like this is suddenly going to take off. The reality of it is, is that you become internally focused, you actually don't necessarily do what you do, and you have to remember that Stuart is ultimately right. No matter how good you are at raising money and how good you are at spinning the story, if you can't do the business and if you can't develop it, then you won't go where you need to go as far as that's concerned. Um, what else would I say or takeaways? Don't trust journalists. Um, <laughs> I have... Um, uh, I remember being interviewed recently for about 45 minutes for one of these award things, and somebody said, um, can I get a bit more detail about you? And I went through it all very eloquently, and then uh, the young lady asked me the question, well, would you do this again when this is finished? And I said, no, sod that. I'm off to a beach with some young lovely. Guess what she printed? <laughs> <laughs> None of the first 45 minutes, but the last 20 seconds, because it made a good byline, as far as I was concerned. So um, I think you do need to be desperately careful from there. Um, team is absolutely right. Um, finally, just to wrap up, I suppose, uh, a few kind of um, hot topics from there. Uh, best deal, uh, well, I enjoyed selling the NASDAQ business we had, Forefront to NCR. Uh, that was for seven times the return that we did um, for the IPO, and that was just as we were running out of cash, and that was just after the dot-com boom. So that was a sweet day. That was, a really, that was really quite nice. Biggest mistake I've made, uh, I got the concept of a transaction wrong. I bought a company that had offices all over Europe because I failed, and I thought the glamour was there. I bought flags in maps, and I don't think you should do that. I think you should always try and get the transaction right from there. Um, worst deal I've ever done, um, all eight nights all night in Paris trying to get a deal done uh, with a German company with simultaneous translation into French and German and English. Um, and however, that led to the best moment in my entire career, which is about five o'clock, everything had finished. Eventually we signed. I've been signing since six o'clock the previous evening, bless France. And <laughs> I um, walked out, dawn, just coming up, walked into a baker's, and they were just serving fresh pan au chocolat, one of those 10 minutes of your life you'd like to repeat again if you've got the chance to do that. And I'll never forget that, and uh, wouldn't have got the second bit if I hadn't got the first. <laughs> um, so, uh, finally, would I do it again? Um, my friends would all say yes, you won't be able to give this up. Uh, I would say no, um, because thank you for your kind comments. It's not necessarily the age, it's the mileage <laughs> that's the problem. Uh, I do wish you luck with your fundraising. Um, uh, my company's called Tui2. Uh, you can find it at me at terry.bert at com. You're more than welcome to mail me if you want to talk about anything or get stuck or do anything from there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.